Hello everyone, my name is Pablo Rivera. And I'm Olivia Walls. And today we are leaving Christianity. We're out of here. I'm done. Sayonara. Just kidding, guys. Tonight on Raw TV, we are talking about leaving Christianity. Yeah, we're only talking about it. We're not really leaving Christianity. No, no, not me. So we have a great show ahead of you guys. We have a special guest by the name of Professor Lindsay here to talk about why people are leaving the faith. That's right, she is a wonderful theologian and we are going to pick her brain to steal a phrase from a friend of mine and really dive deep into all the different aspects that would cause somebody to leave Christianity. Exactly, and if you have questions regarding this topic, this is the night to tune in to leaving Christianity. Absolutely, we are going to answer hopefully as many questions as you can possibly come up with. But without further ado, let's cut to Kaylee Green with Word on the Street and we'll be right back. Corinthians 15.33 says that bad company corrupts good character. This can apply to every aspect of our lives. The people that we hang out with and the situations we put ourselves in can affect who we are. That's why I'm at Southeastern University asking the students on campus how the environment that they put themselves in and the people they surround themselves with affect their character. Let's see what they had to say. I'd say the importance of our environment is almost everything. It's what we use to build our own ideas and to just kind of borrow from that and create our own things that we in turn eventually use to give to other people. I think it's important to, uh, for as Christians that we should surround ourselves with people that have the same mindset of us because if we're hanging out with non-Christians they could get us to do stuff that we would normally not do or even be asked to do. The Bible says iron sharpens iron. You need to be in a situation where your friends are sharpening you and encouraging you to be better in your faith rather than if you put yourself in situations where it kind of breaks you down. Because it can be very easy to fall into that direction that you begin to question your beliefs and you begin to question your values and why you do certain things. Being at a Christian school allows us to be surrounded by people who all love Jesus. This is truly a blessing and can help mold our character to be the best that it can be. I'm Kaylee Green with Word on the Street. Back to you guys in the studio. Thanks for sticking with us. Welcome to our first panel. Hello, panelists. Hello. Oh, wow. <laughs> that was really insane. <laughs> okay, so the topic is leaving Christianity. And mm -hmm. before anyone leaves, I think that they start to waver in faith, right? Mm -hmm. So what are some things that would affect someone's faith? Um, I think a multitude of things can definitely affect your faith, whether mm -hmm. that's a relationship you're in or whether that's you're surrounded um, in an environment that's not surrounded by Christians mm -hmm. and you see all these different influences around you. I think that definitely has an effect of what you truly believe right. because you're not surrounding yourself with people who believe the same things that you do. Yeah. yeah. I think bad company corrupts good character. Mm -hmm. um, I think that a lot of people in our lives, uh, they are in our lives and we may think that they're not affecting us, but I think slowly they are in the back yeah. of our minds, yeah. changing our perspectives and our um, ideas on things. Yeah, yeah, in a way, also going off of that, um, our pride would get in the way of it too because right. when we're around other people we think we can handle more than we can and we're putting ourselves and our abilities to ward off those temptations and ward off um, those bad people in bad situations um, when in actuality we really can't. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. There's a lot of outside factors, you know, that can cause someone to leave Christianity. Like you said, you know, bad company, um, just kind of, you know, things outside the church, you know, behind the, like, outside of the safe walls. Yeah. But yeah. there's just as many things inside, you know, the church that would cause somebody to leave. What are some things yeah. that you guys can think of? I th oh, oh, go ahead. <laughs> I think restrictions and rules can cause people mm -hmm. to leave. I think uh, some people look at Christianity as just a set of rules. Mm -hmm. And they think, oh, if I don't do all these rules, then I'm not considered a Christian. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So they think that if they don't follow all those rules, then they have to leave. Yeah, mm -hmm. going off of that, um, a lot of people get so caught up in, oh, I don't like religion, I don't like this, I don't like that. But that's because their mindset is, okay, the Bible tells me this, they tell me I have to live like this, the Lord loves me because I do this or I act this way. When they're missing the whole concept of, okay, yes, religion is great, but you also have to have that relationship with God. Mm -hmm. And I think that's where people start to fall off from God when they don't have that relationship and they don't feel the love and the mm -hmm. unconditional love and grace that the Lord gives us on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. They're just so caught up in, the Bible says this, my pastor says this, this is how I'm supposed to live. Absolutely. Yeah, and I feel like um, people have been burned by the church, you know, like, yeah. but we have to real, and you know, <clears throat> like, of course, you know, you shouldn't stand for any wrong thing going right. on inside the church, but you have to understand just because you are going to a church 
they're all human still. They're going yeah. to do wrong things and, you know, they're yeah. going to offend you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And and there's many churches who handle things so wrongly, like mm -hmm. so wrongly. Um, but still, that shouldn't steer you away from the person of Jesus. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, he's I think, perfect. And right. And I think that Christianity, we expect the church to be perfect. Right. And we expect the people up there uh, as pastors or on a pedestal to be perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When the case is like, they're not God. They're never mm -hmm. going to be exactly. perfect. <laughs> and we think that since they exemplify Christ, that they are Christ. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. not the truth at all. Mm -hmm. And that's what we get in our mind. And that's when we sit there and we look, we take a step back and we're like, I don't like the way that they just said that in their message, or mm -hmm. I don't like the way they just interacted with this person. When you have to sit back and also say, okay, well, they're also a person. They also have flaws. They also have things they're struggling with and dealing with on a daily basis. Mm -hmm. And we have to accept them for that. Yeah, so yeah. in a way, it's almost like people leave the church because of just the impossible expectations yeah. you know, that they set. And a lot of times, especially in youth ministries, mm -hmm. you know, that's a lot of tumultuous things happen within ministries. I know. Yeah. Growing up, I went to you know two different churches, and it was a time of a lot of shift. You know, mm -hmm. like we had a youth pastor for like a couple months, and then it would switch and it would another thing. And I think uh, that comes with the lack of communication. Yeah. You know that yes, we are not holier than thou. Yes, we are your like the officials of the church, but we mess up sometimes too. Let right. let's talk together about how we can build. And I think that being in youth is such a pivotal moment in your building with your relationship with God. Mm -hmm. Because if you're having a youth pastor that changes out every couple of months, you're not going to have that firm foundation that you need to build upon. Exactly. And our guest who we were talking to earlier, she said that, you know, if people are coming in and out of your life, it's very hard for them to keep that relationship strong because it's not a consistent pattern that they have growing up. Yeah. yeah. And they can't Absolutely. be discipled. Right. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. So. Absolutely. It's, it, in a time when youth's minds are really being molded, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You need stability. Yeah. You know, uh, everything about, you know, a school structure is very stable. You're going to your classes, like mm -hmm. whatever. If we were left up to our own devices, there would be chaos. Yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. You know? I wouldn't go to some classes. I'm not going to lie to you. <laughs> right? exactly. real. So if there's, you know, if we need secular order, but then we're having spiritual chaos, yeah. where yeah. does that leave the youth? You know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. That's it, just, so true. it causes them to leave. But we're going to dive more into that with our special guest yeah. uh, right after this word on the street. We'll be right back. It often feels as though God is not with us during the difficult trials. However, it is in these moments that God's hand is most evident on the situation. That's why I'm at Southeastern University asking the students on campus how God has showed up in a difficult situation in their lives. Let's see what they had to say. I broke my thumb and it snapped it. And so I was in so much pain. I was in a cast and it was really, really hard. Um, and so I went to the doctor, got casted. Um, someone prayed over me and I went back to the doctor two days later and it was completely healed. Um, and so that was a situation where I was so upset and I relied on the Lord and He came through. Every morning that I woke up, there was a thick layer of fog. And for me, seeing that every single morning, knowing that that was going to be the first thing, it was just God saying that I'm here with you and I'm protecting you no matter what happens, um, no matter the situation. Well, even just coming to Southeastern, I didn't exactly know what I wanted to do. And I honestly still don't, but it's been nice to just be able to rely on God and to be able to say to him that you are ordering my steps. When my sister, she was she was in a drowning incident. Um, when my sister was going through that and our whole family was in that situation, um, God showed up in a very comforting way. He was there for our family and especially for me. Despite the trials we go through, all things work out for the good of those who love God. So don't worry, put your faith and trust in Him. He's got you. I'm Kaylee Green with Word on the Street. Back to you guys in the studio. And we're back with our special guest, Professor Lindsay Crossman. Hello. Thank you Hello. so much. Yeah, absolutely. I love to be here. Yes. So glad to have you. All right. And so you teach theology. I do. I teach theology and biblical studies. Awesome. So I mostly teach uh, Christ culture in the university, and then I teach survey of Christian theology. And they just let me start teaching first and second Corinthians, and I'm super excited about Ooh. it. So, so I taught it last fall, and I'll teach it again next fall. So, so it's a whole class on first mm -hmm. and second. On first and second Corinthians. Wow. wow. Yeah. That's, that's awesome. That's awesome. Diving deep. Right? Oh, yeah, it is. And we uh, we do like a discussion-based format, and so we just dive in deep. We look at a couple of different commentaries. Wow. And the Corinthians are just a fun church to look at. Man. Yeah. Okay. They had a lot yeah. of problems. 
problems. I, track the mess. I know, that. right? right? Well, speaking of problems, um, you know, many people leave the tr leave the faith for different reasons, mm -hmm. or their faith wavers, and mm -hmm. I think a lot of a lot of them may face suffering, mm -hmm. and it really just offsets mm -hmm. whatever they've ever right. believed before, mm -hmm. and. There's the preconceived notion that God allowed the suffering. What mm -hmm. do you say to that? No. So suffering is in the world because of the fall. Mm -hmm. You know, suffering is a result of sin and the brokenness that results from sin. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so it happens and God uses it redemptively. Mm -hmm. So it's not that God is like, oh, I'm going to send uh, cancer to your mom so that you can draw closer to me. Mm -hmm. That's not God's heart at all. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, these things happen because of living in a broken and sinful world. And then God takes those terrible things that happen and God redeems them through various methods. So mm -hmm. maybe our character is formed and we become more, um, more humble, or maybe mm -hmm. we learn to persevere <clears throat> through difficult circumstances, or maybe someone comes to Christ as a result of the witness of someone yeah, else who right. is suffering. Yeah, um, we are able to comfort someone else because we have been comforted by the Holy Spirit mm -hmm. um, through grief or through trials. Yeah. Um, and so God uses those things redemptively, and we see kind of that redemptive cord of salvation mm -hmm. throughout the Old Testament and the New Testament. Mm -hmm. um, I think a lot of times we get this idea that because we're Christians, and because, you know, we're promised that God's working all things together for our good, uh -huh. that that means that things are always going to be good. Yeah. yeah. Right, right. And that's not what that promise means at all. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. You know, Paul wrote that. And hello, have we seen the life of Paul? Paul <laughs> ends up being, I think, beheaded. Mm -hmm. I could be wrong about that, so don't quote me. <laughs> uh, but he does, he, he ends up being killed because of his faith. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Almost all mm -hmm. of the disciples were killed because of their faith. Right, right. right. And mm -hmm. we forget that. You know, right. we get comfortable in... A society, even though we like to be like, oh, we're being persecuted, you know, mm. because they didn't put Jesus on the Starbucks cup at Christmas. <laughs> um, but, you know, society tends to kind of move toward Judeo-Christian values. Mm -hmm. And we've become so accustomed to that, that when they stop doing that, we forget that that's society's nature. Right. Mm. Jesus yeah. said, you know, in this world, you will have troubles. Right. Yeah. Right. And there's that saying that bad things happen to good people. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I want to stop that right now <laughs> yeah. because things happen to people. Exactly. Yeah. And That's I exactly think that right. whether it's good or bad or whether someone is labeled good or bad, mm -hmm. I don't think that they, like, let's say she's a good person. She has really good qualities. That doesn't make her a great person. It makes right. her someone who has great qualities. Mm -hmm. right. And, like, bad things can happen to that person. Yeah, who is good? Yeah. Right. Where's that line? Who Christ. says who's good? Who mm -hmm. says who's bad? Mm -hmm. And I think that's what a lot of Christians struggle with when they're saying they're in suffering. I know I went through a time in my life where I was, like, I was going through almost, like, living hell for a year and a half. And I was like, God, I know you're there, but I want nothing to do with you right now. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was because I was suffering and because I didn't have that relationship with him. Mm -hmm. But yeah. through that suffering, God still stayed faithful. And that's how I got my relationship back with him. Mm -hmm. yeah, okay, it's like so taking a walk in somebody else's shoes. You know, you yeah. kind of look, mm -hmm. for example, let's say we, she used you as an example, so right. I'll use it too. <laughs> you know, um, Picking on Nadia today. <laughs> right. In a college campus, you know, we, we get a bad grade and you as a Christian, you know, on a Christian campus, you get an F. Oh, why does bad things happen to good people? There could be somebody that doesn't believe in God that gets an F the yeah. same way you did. And yeah. bad things didn't happen to good people. You know, they, they was a Things just person. happened. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. I, um, I heard a pastor once, there was a podcast I was listening to, and he was talking about how in his family, they don't say, oh, I have good news or I have bad news. I just have news. Mm -hmm. um, and he used the example mm -hmm. of when um, this guy in his congregation came to him. He said, oh, I have this great news. I got a promotion. We're going to move. And it's just, it's going to be so awesome. Mm -hmm. It's a great job. Uh, well, so they moved, and they he had to work really long hours. Mm -hmm. wow. He never they never got connected in with the church, and the whole family ended up falling away from faith. Wow. Wow. So what wow. seemed to be great news for them actually was kind of disastrous for their family. Wow. Wow. And then the same thing happened about the same time. Somebody said, "Oh, I have terrible news. I lost my job." Well, because that person lost their job, doors opened, and they were able mm -hmm. to pursue their dreams, mm -hmm. and things yeah. became things went really well for them. Yeah. And so we get this idea that in the moment, oh, this is bad, this is good. Right. It just is. Mm -hmm. yeah, and what right, we, right, right. how we react and how God mm -hmm. moves through situations determines the outcome of those things. Yeah, yeah, and I think many Christians, and even me growing up, this mm -hmm. was taught that God allows bad things to happen so that good things can come out of it. Mm -hmm. And it's like, God is not the suffering police. He's not there to put a stop, <laughs> but, I'm yeah. going to arrest you because, you, you know, you're mm -hmm. suffering or whatever. You're mm -hmm. causing suffering. Mm -hmm. Right. But, you know, 
he sent the Holy Spirit to help us mm -hmm. not to stop right. all suffering. Because right. suffering, all suffering will stop at the consummation mm -hmm. of history, which is right. the creation of the new heaven and the new earth. Mm -hmm. That's right. when all suffering right. will stop. Yeah. Yeah. So. yeah, it's it's so great. You talked about, yes, there's suffering and it happens, mm -hmm. but God uses it redemptively. Mm -hmm. yeah. you know, and on a personal note, yeah. you know, I've been in and out of the hospital for a while, um, you know, had some heart issues. And it sucks. I, you know, I right. still hurt sometimes. I have to take medication, mm -hmm. but I don't view this as, oh, woe is me, you know, like, God, oh, why? why are you allowing the yeah. suffering? Right. Because in my time in the hospital and in my time even now walking around, you know, during the hospital, I got to speak to the nurses, you know, yeah. nurses that may have given up on, man, right. you know, I believe in God, but look at all these terrible things. Yeah. And you know, I can show them that the joy of the Lord perseveres through suffering. Yeah, yeah. You know? yeah. I think so a lot true. of times we get stuck on the "why me" question when yeah. really we should be asking, "What are you doing here, God?" Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah, exactly. Like, and, and um, just changing our perspective. Yeah, for sure. We had we had guests on the show a couple of um, episodes ago, and they said, "If we have to go through this, what can we do to make it count?" Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. like if this has to happen to us, if this has to like be going on, yeah. then how are you using this? for our good and for the glory of And you. it's just a perspective thing. Mm -hmm. If you're sitting there and asking the why me, mm -hmm. of course you're gonna feel drowned out and yeah. of course you're gonna feel spiritually and mentally drained. Mm -hmm. But if you're saying, okay, what can I learn from this? What can I get from this? Mm -hmm. How can I help somebody and how can I glorify right. you, God? That's when your perspective changes and that's when you sit yeah. there and you're like, okay, I understand this right. and I know that you're still here. Yeah. And it's okay to suffer. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's okay to mourn, it's okay to mm -hmm. weep, it's okay right. to do all of those things and God meets us in that place. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But we have to remember that there's more to it than that. Yeah, mm -hmm. I think there's a time and place yeah. for everything. Yeah, for sure. And I think the Lord speaks through Paul whenever mm -hmm. um, he sends a letter to the Romans. Like, the only thing that we ha we can do to help our sufferings mm -hmm. is to rejoice in them, knowing yeah. that God's up to something good. He's not right. allowing it. He's neither mm -hmm. causing it, mm -hmm. but he is up to something good because yeah. he's the author of only good things. Because mm -hmm. I feel like causing and allowing is almost the same thing. Would, yeah. would you agree? Yeah, so it, it gets into this really kind of gray area and then people are like, oh, well, God allows kids to have leukemia, so how can mm -hmm. God be good? Well, that's not the question. The question is, how does God bring good out of these bad situations that we face mm -hmm. because of free will and because of living in a sinful and broken society? Mm -hmm. yeah. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Guys, we're going to be right back with panel three. But in the meantime, take a look at this. Okay, and welcome back. Thank you for sticking with us. Here we have again Professor Lindsay to continue the conversation. So why do you think that people are leaving Christianity? I think there's a lot of reasons for it. I think at the root of it, it comes down to what you guys were talking in the first panel about relationship. Mm -hmm. Not just relationship with God, but relationship with others. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times our church services are so... Um, you, know, you can walk into the door and you can sit down in the pew or the chair or you know whatever your church has. <laughs> and um, <laughs> my church still has pews. Um, you can sit down and you can go through an entire service and not really ever interact with anybody. Mm -hmm. yeah. And walk out the door, go grab lunch and just move on. And mm -hmm. so we've lost that relational aspect. So if you don't take the initiative to be a part of a small group or mm -hmm. a class or a specific ministry, you don't have those relationships that you're building right. that connect mm -hmm. you to that body of believers. And I think that at the root of it is a lot of it. There's a lot of different reasons why people don't get connected, you know, um, especially in my generation and your generation, people are likely to have four or more jobs by the time they hit the age of 30. And so they, they hesitate to connect mm. because they know that at any point they can have to pick up and move and, and do something else. Yeah. Right. So there's a lot to what it. What would you say about the statement that Christianity is a deliberate choice for a passive world? Oh, I like that. Just came um, up with it. <laughs> just out of my brain. Um, I like that. And I think there's a lot to that, that mm -hmm. we have to choose to be relational. Mm -hmm. We have to choose to 
do those things that will draw us closer to Christ. Mm -hmm. You know, there's a lot of the spirit moving in that mm -hmm. and empowering that. But at the same time, there's something to be said for Christian discipline. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. I think we've really gotten away from that. We're like, oh, well, you know, those disciplines, they're just so empty. Mm -hmm. James uh, K.A. Smith, who's a Christian philosopher, he talks a lot about thick practices mm -hmm. and how the things that we do shape the things that we love and that we are what we love, that we're not mm -hmm. primarily thinking beings, which is what a lot of the enlightenment and you know modern society has told us, but that we are loving beings. Mm -hmm. And the things that we love will influence the things that we do and the things that we practice. And I think that that has a lot to it. So his argument is we should start by practicing what we love. Mm -hmm. So define what is the good life. Is the good life the life that Christ has called us to? Is the good life, you know, having a great job, having two or three kids, having yeah. a nice car, having a nice house, and decide what you think the good life is, is what you will aim your intentions toward. Wow. Mm -hmm. And so okay. I think that has a lot to do with it. So it is intentional. Mm -hmm. You have to walk through those practices, but those practices then form you and shape you into the person that God has called you to be. That's so good. Wow. Do you think people are leaving for other religions or are they just going and just no. doing their own thing? I think maybe some people. But overall, right. studies are showing that people are not leaving for other religions. They're leaving for nothing. Mm -hmm. So the Barna Group and several other groups have done research on what's called the rise of the nuns. So that wow. when you do a survey of a lot of, you know, just the person on the street, mm -hmm. what do you identify as? Do you identify as Christian? Do you identify as Buddhist, as atheist? A lot of people are like, eh, I'm just not, I'm not anything. Mm -hmm. um, and so that is, they're, they're spiritual and they'll say, oh yeah, God's out there. Kinda Creasy Dean and the National Study for Youth and Religion did a 10 year longitudinal study that finished up about three or four years ago. Um, and what they came out with is that this generation of teenagers who are now young adults um, practice what's called moral therapeutic deism, where God is like this giant butler in the sky that like he's out there and God wants you to have a good life. And when you need him, you can like call him and be like, yo God, what's up? You know, my family's having some problems. But other than that, God just kind of hangs back and doesn't have anything to do with you. Mm. I think wow. you've, you've just labeled a lot of people in the church. I don't know. <laughs> <without> <laughs> yeah, you no, and, that's true. Yeah. yeah. And, and so much so that uh, the way that we've shaped um, our formative practices within the church mm. kind of enables that. Right. Mm. Um, so I'd really, if you're really interested in it, I'd recommend her book, um, mm. Almost Christian, okay. what the faith of America's teenagers is telling the church. Wow. And how can we respond to that? It's a really good book. Mm. So what are things that we can practically do as Christians and as kind of young adults now pouring into youth students um, and helping them build their faith when they're going through times of suffering they don't understand? I think be there for them. Okay. You know, don't try to offer those platitudes that you always hear, oh, well, you know, God is doing something. And that's true, God is doing something. But that's not what they need to hear at yeah, that moment. They true. need to be heard, mm -hmm. and they need to know that you're there, and it's okay to question, and it's okay to doubt, and it's okay to walk through what David called the valley of the shadow of death. Yeah. Mm -hmm. If we don't walk through those things, our faith will never deepen. Mm -hmm. And so if we always keep things surface level, we're never going to be able to make those deep connections, not only with God, but with each other. Right. Um, so I think allowing yourself to be open and to be vulnerable, and that's hard because that means you've got to let somebody see that you're not perfect. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That you know sometimes you forget to read your Bible, mm -hmm. you know, or you might you know Never. yell what? at your roommate <laughs> or you know complain what? about something. Um, but in that, that God is is working in you, yeah. and that you know sharing the things that God has done that might relate to that, I think that's a big thing. I think another thing is being consistent in relationships. Mm -hmm. So a lot of times, and I'm gonna knock on Southeastern students because I used to be one. Um, <laughs> a lot of times, you know, students will go to a church for like a semester okay. and they're like, oh, well, you know, I didn't like the music or the pastor was boring mm. or I just didn't make any connections. It takes 18 months for you to form long-term relationships. If you're going to really invest in someone, you've got to be willing to stick it out for the long haul. That means go to a church, get plugged in, sit somewhere other than where all the other college students are sitting, right. talk to people, and find a place where you can serve, and then stay there for like three semesters. Mm -hmm. And if after three semesters you're still not you know, connecting well, you still really don't feel like this is the place that God has for you, pray about it, mm -hmm. and find somewhere else. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But give it that long-term ability to mm -hmm. really change you and for you to impact others because church is not about what church can do for us right, right. church is about what can we do for the body mm -hmm. yeah and if the so the body is made up of all the members 
well, if the members don't show up, there's no body. That's mm -hmm. good. Mm -hmm. So we've got to start investing into the church instead of just seeing what can the church do for us. That's right? so good. Now, a lot of times you say, well, I want to invest in the church, but there's no opportunity for me. Have you talked to someone? Right. Have you approached the pastor? Have you said, hey, pastor, I want to buy you some coffee. Hmm. And I want to tell you what my heart is that I want to be involved in, and where can I be involved and be willing to be involved wherever they say, even if it's not maybe where your passion is at that time. Mm -hmm. So true. good. So good. So, yeah, you have to, you know, just like we were saying earlier, you have to be deliberate. Yeah. You know, if you want Jesus, then want him. You know, yeah. if, if we Not want, under your stipulations mm -hmm. and your circumstances. Right. Exactly. If we want coffee, we are going to get it. We don't yeah. sit there and wait for coffee to come oh, get us. I wish <laughs> angels would bring me coffee. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, That'd that. be nice. <laughs> you know, in a, in a world where, you know, it's very, it's a capitalist society, you know, if you want something, you go and get it. Yeah. It's weird how, you know, in the spiritual world, we expect things to come get us. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. But, so you know, Pastor Lindsay, thank you yeah. so much for, for coming and yes, talking with us. Uh, been good. This has been an amazing show. Uh, we've talked, you know, about leaving Christianity. What makes mm -hmm. people leave? What are some misconceptions people have about the church? Um, and really just kind of what we should expect and what we should, the mindset we should be in that can keep us where we need yeah, to be. Yeah, and God's not afraid of our questions. He's not afraid of our doubts, mm -hmm. you know. But it's important that even when you have questions and doubts, Go get answers. Don't yeah. just leave something just because you don't understand. And it's okay not to understand. Things yeah. happen, and there's a lot of things that happen in my life that I don't understand. Mm -hmm. But it's it's okay. Absolutely. <laughs> Olivia, would you like to lead us to the Lord? Yes. Thank you, Father, for such a great conversation. And we are so happy that we are not leaving Christianity. <laughs> but, Father, we love you, and we just want to grow a relationship with you even further through the trials, through the triumphs. We know that you are always there. You are ever-present. Thank you for Professor Lindsay shining so much light, answering our questions, and we hope that it has impacted our audience in a new way, in a fresh way. We love you, Lord, and we love your son. In your name we pray. Amen. 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 Guys, thanks so much for joining us on this fantastic show. And in the meantime, don't forget to live it raw.